The game of 49 is for two to five players, where you'll be participating in auctions and trying to win spaces on the board to get four in a row of your color. This is going to happen horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Each round a card is turned up and everyone's bidding on this spot. The last person standing, the highest bidder, will win that spot and place their chip there. Other cards are wild and allow you to go into any unoccupied range of numbers on the board. Even better, there's a payoff with these wild cards and the more chips you have on the board, the more money you'll make. So it's like an economic game in disguise. And it wouldn't be the game of 49 if the 49 spot wasn't important because the person that wins there gets the best spot on the board. If they win it again, they can go anywhere they like, but it's also the only spot that you can get bumped off. Do you have what it takes to manage your cash and win enough auctions to get four in a row in this family level auction game that's full of excitement? There's only one way to find out. To set up the game, first place the board in the middle of the table where everybody can see and reach it. Next, you'll take the tray with all the Game of 49 number cards. They look like this on the back and this on the front. You'll take them out of the tray. You will shuffle them up all really well, and then you'll place them back in this tray and you can place this near the board. Each player will take all the chips of the color of their choice. If you're playing with less than five players, you'll take the colors that aren't being selected and you'll place them all back in the box. This would be a four player game. Take the money tray and place it near the board where everybody can reach it and then give every player $49. This comes in increments of three $10 bills, three $5 bills and four $1 bills. Every player will get that. Also note that the money is hidden during the game and regardless of the denomination, they all have the same back to help keep it hidden. You can actually hide it under the table as well. Decide on a player to go first. That player will take the first player token and the auction token. The object of the game is to simply get four of your chips in a row. This could be diagonal, horizontal, or vertical. If you're playing with five players, the first player to get three chips in a row wins. Now the player who has the starting token in front of them will take the top card off the deck and they will flip it face up for everybody to see. Most of the time it will be a single number here. Starting with the start token player, this player can either bid or pass. Now here on the card you see a minimum bid of $3. You can decide to play with these minimum bids or not. If you do, the first person that bids on this card will have to bid a minimum of three. Otherwise you can use just a minimum of one on all the cards. The player with the start token will take the auction token and place it on the number on the board that's being bid on. Then starting with the start player and going clockwise around, they have two options. They can either bid or pass. If at any time any player passes, they are out of this round for 17. They cannot get back in on any number that they have passed on. If they bid, uh, the next player then gets to bid clockwise if they're still in and they have to bid at least higher than that player. This will continue until everybody has passed except one player. Also note that you can only bid with the amount of money you have. You cannot bid more than you have. So let's say in this case, the green player won this for let's say $11. They would pay that $11 to the bank and then they would take the chip of their color and place it on that. They would then take this card and place it just in front of them. This just helps in case the board gets bumped, that everyone knows where they are at. The start player token then moves clockwise to the player to the left, and that player starts a new round by drawing a new card. In this case, it's another number. In the rare case that nobody bids on a card, this card would get removed from the game, and the start player would go clockwise, and we would get another card. Now, instead of a single number coming up, a single type of wild card might come up instead. I'm going to show you these different wild cards and what they do because they're handled differently. First of all, when these cards come up, you'll see that they are wild and it tells you which spots are possible to go in. So the winner of this one, for example, could go into any unoccupied spot in the outer row, numbers 1 through 24. This card, anywhere in this sort of middle uh, square, there are numbers 25 through 40, any unoccupied square there. This one is any unoccupied spot here. And numbers 41 through 48, 49 we'll get to in just a moment because it is just slightly different. With all these wild cards, first you will auction just like normal, but then the winner will get to pick the spot that's unoccupied that they want in any of these wild cards, and then we will do a payoff. Let's go through some examples. So let's say Green won this card with a bid, they paid the money to the bank, and they can go into any unoccupied spot here. Let's say they pick here. 
Now these other three wild cards work the same way. When you get a spot and you win the bid, you can go to any one of these unoccupied spots shown on the card. For all of these wild cards, after the wild is bought, paid for, and placed, a payoff happens. And what happens is every player gets $7 for every chip they have on the board. Regardless of whether you won this or not, it doesn't matter. Every player gets $7 for every chip they have on the board. Let's take a look at the example. So let's say right after this card was won, this is what the board looks like. We notice that red and yellow both have one chip. Each of them would get $7 because they have one chip on the board and they'd get that from the bank. The orange player would get $14 because they have two chips. It's always $7 per chip. The blue player would get $21 and the green player would get $28. And then like normal, this would move to the next starting player and we would put a new card down just like we usually do. Now, even though every player gets $7 for every one of their chips on the board during a payoff, there is a maximum. After seven chips, you will max out at $49. You can have more chips on the board than seven, but when a payoff happens, you will still just max out at $49. So you can never receive more than $49 during a payoff. Now let's take a look at the Wild 49 card. This card is special because it does break some of the rules of the game. The first time a Wild 49 comes out, the winner will be able to place their chip in the 49 spot. Now, just like all the other Wilds, after that's done, a payoff of $7 per chip for everybody on the board like normal. However, later on during the game, when another Wild 49 card comes up, if the player who's already in the 49 spot wins this auction again, they can go into any unoccupied spot on the board. If a different color wins the 49, this is the only time in the game that somebody can be bumped off. They basically go in the 49 and this chip just gets given back to the normal player and we would do the normal payoff like always. Now, statistically, if it were to happen equally, one of these wild cards would come up every fifth card throughout the deck. Now again, the winner is the one to get four in a row, unless you're playing with five players and then the first one with three in a row will win. And since your four chips have to be vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, none of these are actually winning conditions of four chips of a certain color. There might be some unplayable cards that come out. On your turn, if you're pulling out a card and the number is taken already, in this case, number 25 was already taken from our wild example earlier. This card would just get discarded out of the game and you would bring out a new card and continue the auction. In the rare circumstance that the deck runs out and nobody has won the game, the one with the most chips on the board would win. If it's tied, the player with the most money wins. If it's still tied, the player that has their chip in the highest number on the board would win. Now we already learned that you can't purposely overbid how much money you have, but what if it happens by accident? Let's say this blue player just won 17 and they realize they didn't have enough money. Well, what happens is their chip comes off the one that they just won. This will get re-auctioned, including the bidder that did it by accident. Now what happens is the player that did that also will take all the cards that they won that round, they will flip them over, shuffle them, and then one card will get flipped up and they would remove their chip and this card from the game. Then the second auction for that card will happen as normal. An optional rule that you can use is called the check rule. How this works is, let's say we're the start player and we're bidding on card number 24. Instead of bidding or passing like normal, I have a third option of called check. Check is essentially the same thing as a pass, but you can get back in the bid. So let's say I'm not sure if I want to bid for this. I might want to, but I don't want to necessarily pass. I say check. It goes to the next player clockwise like normal. That player also has the same three options. They might check, it then goes to the next player. If that player bids, then it goes clockwise like normal, but the people that checked can now come in and bid or pass. Now, if everybody checks that's in the game, essentially it's, it's treated just like a pass, and this card would go out of the game. We would draw a new one, and this would go to the next player. If everybody checks on a wild payoff, nobody wins it, but everybody does get the payoff as normal. Now you can play this game with two players, but there are some additional rules. Number one, the minimum bid for cards are always used, it's mandatory. So in this case, you could not buy this card for anything less than four. The second difference is the amount of chips and the amount of dollars you get for chips during payoff. You still max out at seven chips, you still get a maximum of 49. But for every chip over that, you're gonna start losing money. So with eight chips, instead of getting the normal 49 maxing out, it goes down to 42. With nine chips, it goes down to 35, and with 10 or more, it goes down to 28, so you really have to be cautious of not buying places that you don't want. 
Players chips are meant to be an unlimited amount, so if you do run out in the rare circumstance, use coins or other means to keep track of your spots.